Here's a method for baking a great pizza in a normal home oven without the use of a pizza stone or pizza steel. You normally need a big, heavy slab of thermally conductive material to brown the bottom of your pizza. Without a stone, it just ends up tasting like bread with stuff on top. But with the method I'm going to show you now, we shall achieve a brown, crispy bottom by simply cooking the pizza up on the oven grate itself. This takes some practice, and the result tastes a little different from a traditional pie, but it is very tasty and it is very quick. No need to preheat the oven on max for an hour to get your stone or steel hot enough. You just turn on your broiler all the way hot. Brits would call this a grill. It's the filament at the top of your oven. Make sure that your oven grate is reasonably clean and is positioned up high. Second from the top position is what works for me. Broilers heat up in a matter of seconds, but you do need to give this a few minutes to heat up the grate itself. A good way to test is just to put a wet towel on the grate. If it sizzles, it's hot enough and it'll probably come up to temperature in the time it takes to get your dough prepped. I'm using my usual pizza dough recipe, which is in the description. I mix up my dough, portion it into balls, and then put them straight in the refrigerator for a cold rise, at least a day and up to a week in there. I'm working with my dough straight out of the refrigerator. It really helps if the dough is as cold as possible when it goes in the oven. A little flour on both sides, and rather than stretch this by hand, I'm going to use a rolling pin. This baking method works much better if the dough is rolling rolled out to an even thickness throughout. If you don't have a rolling pin, a wine bottle works great. I'm rolling and turning, rolling and turning, just like I would if I was rolling out pastry. It ensures the dough won't stick to the board and it helps you push it out evenly in all directions, though I am shooting for an oblong rather than a circle. A rectangular shape will be much easier to get into the oven and under the broiler, you'll see. Roll it out until it's not quite as thin as you want it because it'll stretch a little more on the way in. Now I'm just gonna coat it in a very thin film of olive oil, and I'm working quickly before this dough warms up too much. While it's cold, it's stiff, and while it's stiff, it's easier to drape onto the oven grate. I'll pull the grate out as far as it goes, and here comes the hardest part, draping the dough onto the grate oil side down. That's important, oil side down. If you have big areas of dough around the edge that are falling really far down, try to pick them up and stretch them until you can hang them over the nearest grate. Remember, the grates are hot. Evenness is the name of the game here. We want every inch of dough as equal a distance as possible from the broiler. And I do find that I get more even cooking if I slide this in and then close the oven door. Some people like to leave the door open when broiling. I get more even results with this if I close it. Then watch it like a hawk. This first part only takes me about three minutes. I'm looking for the dough to start to burn. Yes, I'm waiting for a little burning. A few little burn spots are standard on a traditional pizza crust. It's called leopard spotting. Okay, now freeze frame. You can see that my broiler is hotter toward the back of the oven. That far side is browner than the near side. If yours is really uneven, you could try rotating the dough, but it has to cook to a certain point before it'll release from the grates intact. So I'm simply going to rotate as I flip, over and around. Since we oiled the downward facing side and we preheated the oven grate a little bit, that releases very easily. I'm just using my fingers, but you could use tongs. Now I'm just gonna dress the pizza right here. It tastes better if it cooks quickly and taking this out to the counter top to dress it would really slow us down. My sauce, by the way, is just pastine, kitchen-ready ground tomatoes. When I have to settle for another crushed tomato product, I usually need to put in tomato paste to get the flavor as strong as I want it. Some olive oil, a little sugar, and some dried herbs. Oregano, maybe some basil, that's it. Remember, it's a super thin pizza, so be careful you don't put on too much sauce. I usually need to put on a little less than is my instinct. A little finely grated Parmesan on top of the sauce really improves the flavor. And then my grated mozzarella. I'm using Boar's Head Whole Milk Low Moisture Mozzarella, freshly grated. The pre-grated stuff has anti-caking agents that interfere with browning. Now this is a style of pizza where you absolutely could use fresh mozzarella if you wanted, the high moisture stuff that they use on Neapolitan pizza. Just don't put on quite as much or the pizza will be soggy. Okay, back under the broiler this goes, and again, I get a more even result if I close the door. Watch it like a hawk. Two minutes later, the back row of bubbles looks like it's gonna burn because my broiler is apparently a lot hotter back there. 
I'm going to rotate the pizza, which is easy to do now that the crust has solidified, back in and then just cook it until the cheese is as brown as you'd like. I gave it maybe another minute and out it comes, straight to a cooling rack to keep the crust crispy, but you could pull it out onto anything. Total cook time there was like seven minutes, and since the sauce and cheese were only on there for half that time, you'll notice some differences compared to a normal pizza. The sauce has a brighter color and flavor, and the cheese is hardly broken at all. With a conventionally baked pizza, the cheese is in there for long enough to overheat and squeeze out a bunch of orange grease. There's hardly any grease here, which is great in my opinion. After it's cooled and steamed off for a few minutes, I'll transfer it to a cutting board and chop through it. Really crispy crust there. And of course, we know exactly how brown the bottom is. Amazing. And the taste? Amazingly close to a New York style pizza, though it is a little different because the top side crust got some dry heat in the oven. It has not bonded with the sauce and cheese quite as much. The layers are a bit more distinct in the mouth, and the bottom crust is kind of smooth on the tongue. None of this is bad, mind you. It's just a little different. Another terrific thing about this method is that we could immediately turn around and start baking another pizza right after the first one comes out. The grates don't need a lot of time to recharge with heat the way a pizza stone does. Now, you are no doubt wondering, why don't you just bake it on a cookie sheet? Why not on the cooling rack? Why didn't you hand stretch the dough? Why does it have to be even thickness? Well, I'm going to show you all of those things right after I thank the sponsor of this video, World of Warships. I've reached that season in a man's life when he inexplicably becomes interested in military history, hence World of Warships, the thinking man's action game. You command a massive naval fleet featuring hyper-accurate renderings of real, legendary combat vessels, like the USS Indianapolis, hundreds of ships available from the great navies of the world, and the designers are adding more all the time. Again, they're amazingly historically accurate. It's free to play, and if you start now as a new player, you'll get tons of goodies to get you out of drive. Doc. Hit my referral link that's in the description and use this code, Ready for Battle 2020 that's in the description. You will get 700 doubloons, 7 days of premium membership, a million credits, 2 port slot, and 2 premium ships. The USS Charleston with Stars and Stripe custom camouflage, and the Japanese ship Ishizuchi and Lunar Warrior custom camouflage. That's for new players who register with my link and code in the description. Thanks to World of Warships, and I'll see you on the waves, Captain! Now, let's get back to your questions. Why does the dough have to be rolled out to even thickness? Why can't you just hand stretch it? Well, let's try that. A little flour on the board, I'll punch it out a little, and then you could toss it in the air or just do a gravity stretch like this. One virtue of this kind of stretching is that it gets you uneven thickness. Gossamer thin dough toward the center and a nice fluffy cornice around the edge. That's normally a good thing. Heterogeneity! Drape that on the hot grates. Everything is looking good so far, but then notice how much further along those gossamer thin thin areas are. They're burning, and the thicker areas are still white. That is not going to cut it. This baking method works a lot better if you roll the dough out to a uniform thickness to avoid a disaster like that. Now here's another good question. Why bother laying the dough perilously across the oven grates in the first place? Why not just do it on a baking sheet? Well, you could. Get your dough rolled out, rub on a thin film of oil, and then place it oil side down on a baking sheet. The oil is essential. Without it, the dough would stick. Under the hot broiler, it goes, and check this out, it cooks so much slower. It was eight minutes before I got that much color on the first side, and that's not even that great color. Since it's been in there for so long, it is now dry and hard. We'll top it, put it back under the broiler. This is certainly a lot easier. Cheese takes the normal three or so minutes to brown, though geez, I should have rotated that. You don't realize how uneven your broiler is until you try to do something like this. Let it cool, slice it up, and honestly, that's not bad. If I was hungry, I'd eat that happily, but it tastes like one of those pizzas you make with a pre-baked crust from the grocery store, because that's essentially what it is. The crust is way overbaked. It's almost like pizza toppings on a hot cracker. It's good food, but bad pizza, in my opinion. When we bake right on the hot oven grates, we're literally grilling the pizza, just like we would on a charcoal grill outside. It's getting radiant heat from above and a little radiation or convection from below, plus it's getting conductive heat from the hot grate. 
That means it cooks quicker and loses less moisture before turning brown. And unlike a pizza we grill outside, this pizza we're able to hit with very intense heat from above to get great color on the cheese, which is always the problem with grilled pizza. You never get enough color on the cheese. Now, you would logically wonder, can't we get the best of both worlds by baking this on the cooling rack? Again, we're not perilously draping dough over hot, wide-set grates. Oiled side goes right down on the rack, and you can easily slide that rack right onto the grate, or kind of easily. Now, the dough is getting heat on both sides, which is good, but it's still not actually touching the hot grates, which means it still cooks kind of slowly. It took almost five minutes to get this much color, and that's not that much color. As I flip it, I can feel that's going kind of hard and crackery again. Top it off, normal three minutes under the broiler again, and that doesn't look bad. Let it cool a bit, transfer it to a cutting board, slice her up, and that's definitely better than the pizza we baked on the cookie sheet, but it's not as good as the one we did on the oven grate. So the crust, again, is just too much like a cracker. It has not merged hardly at all with the toppings. Now you might be wondering, couldn't you fix this problem by preheating the cooling rack under the broiler? Yes, I think that would work. The problem is that cooling racks, ironically, are often not designed to get very hot. They have coatings on them that can break down and melt. The manufacturer should tell you what maximum heat your rack is designed to tolerate. I think this one is like 500 Fahrenheit or 260C, and surfaces will get considerably hotter than that when they're right under a broiler at full strength. Even if you got a cooling rack that could take the heat, I suspect it still wouldn't work quite as well because the metal will be thinner, which means it'll retain and then transfer less heat than you'll get from those thicker oven grates. Anyway, I'm sure there's lots of different ways to make this basic method work. Experiment with your own tools and let me know what works for you. Just remember that every oven is different. I learned from doing this that my new oven here has a broiler hot spot on the back and to the right. Your oven will have its own eccentricities. I recommend making a batch of four or eight dough balls and just practicing this in your oven a few times over and over and over again before you actually try to make dinner for hungry people. But once you get the hang of it in your oven, I think this is a pretty easy and energy efficient method that gets great results and requires no special equipment. You can't beat that.